Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and a lot of you were asking me how I would go about modeling this part, this soap dish part. And you can see here on screen, I've actually been able to create this using just seven features in SolidWorks. And so in today's video, I'm gonna take you through and explain how I created this model. Ow! So to really understand how this model was created in just seven features, we really have to examine what's going on in the linear pattern command using very sketch. And this is a topic that we cover in an upcoming training class called Toby's SW advanced part design, but it's not the only topic that is used in the construction of this model that's covered in that training class. We also talk about things like the Pierce constraint and creating curves and changing the color of our sketches and working with multi-body and working with patterns and all kinds of cool stuff that we get into in that advanced part design class. So if you've ever been interested in learning more about sweeps and lofts and curves and multi-body and pattern, be sure to take a look down in the description. I've got all the information about that upcoming training class. We're teaching it live later this month. So let's talk about the linear pattern command and the very sketch option. And what the very sketch option does is it lets us take geometry that we've constructed at the sketch level, particularly relationships, and it lets us reuse those relationships in a linear pattern. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm gonna create just a basic polygon here using some auto dimensioning in sketch mode. And when I'm done creating this shape, what I'm gonna do is extrude it into a solid. So we'll bring this out here to eight millimeters. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a sketch here of a slot on the front face of this model. And what I'd really like to do with this slot is I'd like to create a pattern of this slot running across this model where the slot actually grows as it runs along the model. So we get a slightly larger one there, slightly larger one there, slightly larger one there. Now, one way that we could do this would be using what's called very instance. That's something else that we're teaching in this upcoming training class. And I've also got a video on it. So I'll include a link to that video uh, up in the, in the upper corner over there. Uh, I'll include a link to that video. But the idea of very sketch is a little bit different from very instance. See, with very sketch, what we're able to do is create some relationships in the original sketch and then reuse those relationships in the subsequent instances of the linear pattern. And this is what I mean. Let's say I take this line here and I perform an offset entities command with that line. So I'm going to just offset that in this direction at 10 millimeters. I'm going to take that line and make it for construction. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point of the line and make it coincident to this construction line, make coincident. And now I'm going to take that slot and turn it into an extruded cut. So right mouse button through all right mouse button. And there we go. We've got our first slot. Now I'm going to create a linear pattern of that slot. So I click on the, the uh, features to pattern. I click on my direction. Let's say that this is my direction here. And I say that I want that to pattern at 14 millimeters. Okay, that pretty much is what I think we would expect from a linear pattern. But if you examine the linear pattern feature, so right mouse button, edit feature, and then you go down here into the box and you look down in the section that's called options. It's kind of down here at the bottom, options. There's an option here called very sketch. However, that option is not currently selectable. You can't actually pick very sketch. Well, the trick to making that option enabled is when you define the direction of your pattern, instead of choosing an edge, what you need to do is choose a dimension. So if I choose this 10 millimeter dimension, I can have the pattern follow the linear direction that's established by that dimension. If I choose this dimension here, the pattern would go in this direction. If I choose this dimension here, the pattern would go in this direction. So your linear dimensions from the original feature can actually be used to establish a direction of the pattern. Not only that, but if you choose a dimension from the original feature, the very sketch functionality will become enabled. So, or at least available. So I'll check that option. I'll, I'll choose my direction one. I'll choose this 10 millimeter dimension and look at that very sketch can now be checked on or checked off. You'll notice that I've got full preview and partial preview available here. If partial preview is, is tagged, then you see, I don't really get a good pattern preview. If full preview is turned on, then when I turn on very sketch, you can see I'm actually getting the results that I wanted. So for for every subsequent instance of the pattern, the sketch is updating with that coincident relationship to the center of the arc at the top of the slot, and therefore the slot is growing in length. 
And if you like this kind of functionality, be sure to take a moment and hit the like button in this video. And also remember that we really talk a lot about patterns in this upcoming advanced part design training class. And we talk a lot about this topic in particular and all the cool things you can do with very sketch. Like what if you needed this to follow a curved edge of the part to get larger as it's running? You know, what are the little tricks you can do? What if you wanted that pattern to radiate outward like a cut revolve? Is there any way we can do that? Well, the answer is yes, you can do all of that with the very powerful, very sketch command. So now let's get back to this soap dish and I'm gonna do kind of a speed run on this soap dish, but I think you're gonna really see the power of the very sketch command as I get in here to do this soap dish. So here's the drawing of this part. We're gonna kind of speed run this part here. So if you wanna grab a screen capture, you can follow along with, but here we go in three, two, one, go. So this part we can see is made of plain carbon steel in millimeters. We're gonna start out here on the top plane, begin a sketch, and we're gonna start out by creating a line that comes across here. We'll come back and touch this end point and come across with a radius. I'll make that radius a value of eight millimeters. We're gonna come back and touch that end point and come up and around. And then we're gonna have one more radius here that comes around like so. Let's take this radius and this radius and make them equal. And let's take this line and hold control and pick this arc and make them tangent. And now let's take this point and hold control and we'll pick here and we'll make that midpoint. And then here's a little trick that I like to do whenever I'm working with wires like this. I go to the offset entities command. Let's select all this geometry here. And I use this option here by directional. So the offset geometry goes in two directions, inside and outside. I set my distance here to one half of the wire thickness, so two millimeters, because my wires are four millimeters. And I set this option down here to convert the offset geometry to be construction geometry. And what this does is it sets it up so that it's very easy for me to take max max dimensions. Like here I'll hold shift and I'll pick this arc and this arc. And I'll drop in a dimension here of 175. Well, it's a lot easier for me to visualize that and to dimension that when I'm going to the max arc, as opposed to dimensioning it to the center line, which I'm gonna be sweeping around, and then you know having to do that extra math. So here you can see I can create a dimension here that goes from max max here, and that's gonna be at 80. And it's just a lot easier for me to visualize. It shows up better if you import these dimensions to a drawing. And then for these uh, inside bend radius, I can just drop these in as driven dimensions. So in inside radius six, outside radius 10, that all matches up with the drawing. I think we're good to go here with the center line. So I'm gonna exit this sketch and I'm gonna try to sweep this. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see if it works this time. So I'm gonna make this four millimeters. I'm gonna pick my sweep path and yeah, see, look at this. SolidWorks is being kind of funky here. I'm using that option to automatically create the circle, but it's ending up on an angle for some reason and I, I really can't control that. There's not an option in here like, um, you know, make make the profile normal to a set direction or anything like that. Like if I could if I could tweak that profile to be relative to a specific vector, then I would end up getting this results. This happens a lot of times when the sweep is closed, when the sweep runs all the way around. But, you know, regardless, if you're doing a speed run, you're going to have to figure out a way around this. And so for me, that workaround is going to be to just create the circle manually. So I'm not going to be able to use circular profile here. You know, sad trombone sound. And so I'm going to have to just uh, create this manually. So right plane, begin a sketch, S key, circle. Let's drop in a circle here like so. That's going to be four millimeters diameter. Exit sketch. We're going to call this one uh, upper wire sweep path. We're going to call this one upper wire, upper wire sweep profile. And I'm also going to change the color of the path. This is something I really like to do in SolidWorks when I'm doing advanced sweeping and, and lofting. Something we talk about a lot in the upcoming training class. Uh, link in the description down below. But changing your sketch colors when you're doing advanced sweeping and lofting can really help you keep things straight. So now we're going to choose to sweep this profile along this path. And look at that. That looks beautiful. And now we no longer have that skewed weirdness going on that we had before. So we are are good to go. We'll call this one upper wire. And so now we're going to move on to our lower wires. We are going to need to reference that sweep path. So I'm going to show that in the tree here. And then I'm going to go to my front plane. I'm going to hold control and drag the front plane. I see on the drawing, it says that the gap here to this first one is nine millimeters. So that distance is going to be nine plus 
two half material thicknesses or one one wire thickness nine plus four to get me the center to center distance there so the uh the gap there was uh nine i'm going from center to center so to accommodate that gap i need to just add one half wire thickness on each side so that gets me to the center line of that lower wire and now on that lower wire i'm going to begin a sketch i'm going to get normal two here and i'm going to create a line that comes straight down i'm going to come back and touch the end point come across it's going to be radius eight I'm going to create another line that comes across horizontal, come back, touch the end point, come up like so, and then a vertical line, hit escape, pick this arc, hold control, pick this arc, let go of control, equal. And then for the tangent, I don't have to pick this arc, hold control, pick this arc. I can just pick this point here and then make tangent. We'll create that relationship between the, the line and the arc and make those tangents. So you can just pick the point and then make tangent. Kind of a cool little shortcut there. So now we're going to use what's called the Pierce constraint. And this is something else that we learn a lot about in the advanced part design training class. And what the Pierce constraint does is it relocates this point. So this point is currently here and it's going to get relocated to here. And what here is, is it's the location where this arc from the path is passing through this sketch plane. So if I pick this arc from the path and then I hold control and then I pick this point here, Pierce is always to a point in your current sketch. So I pick this point here and then I let go of control. You'll see that Pierce shows up and Pierce is going to relocate that point. So I pick Pierce and there it goes. It relocates that point. So you can remember Pierce point. Pierce is always to a point in the 2D sketch, and it's always to a line or an arc outside of the 2D sketch, a curve outside of the 2D sketch. So you pick this point here, you hold control, you pick this arc, you let go of control, and then you've got this option for Pierce. And what Pierce is going to do is relocate that point to that location where the arc is passing through. If you like the idea of Pierce, and if that explanation makes sense, hit the like button down below. Leave a comment down below. Let me know that you like that explanation of Pierce. And so now I'm going to get a, uh, a final dimension here. This dimension is going to be from this line down here. This dimension is shown as the max dimension. So again, I could use that little offset trick, or I could just do the math. So the math is going to be 22 minus 4 uh, for that wire diameter. This one's going to be a minus, not a plus, because we're... Um, we're removing from that dimension. All right, so now we're going to choose to exit that sketch and we could call this one um, path, path uh, lower wire one. And we can say that we want that to be a sweep. And this is an open contour. It's not closed. So I probably won't get that leaning uh, phenomenon that we saw a few moments ago. So I'll say circular profile four. And let's take this line here and let's look at this thing from the front. Yep, that looks good. That looks good. That all looks good there. So now we hit the green check mark and now... We are ready to perform our linear pattern with our magical very sketch functionality. But there is one problem, right? If you think about this, let, let, I mean, let's get into it here. Linear pattern. We're going to say that our features to pattern are going to be this sweep here that we created. So there's our features to pattern. And then we're going to say that we want our very sketch option to be enabled. So down here, very sketch. So we're going to come up here to direction one, and we're going to pick a dimension that's coming from the sketch. Well, the problem is that the dimensions that are in the sketch are all here on this plane. And that means that all those dimensions are going to be going this way or this way, if we imagine the local X, Y on that plane. So like if I pick this 18 dimension, it's going to be going up or it's going to be going down. But that's not the direction that I need. I need that third direction. I need I need the pattern to go in this direction here. This third direction kind of coming away from that sketch plane. Well, here's where I was pleasantly surprised when I did this model in that I discovered that if you choose this dimension here, the dimension that was used to create the plane, that not only gives you a direction for the pattern, but it also enables the very sketch functionality. So now very sketch can be toggled on and off. It is now an available option. So I am going to turn that on for very sketch and look at that. We can already see in the preview because we have full preview turned on what this pattern is going to end up looking like. And I got to say that's already looking pretty good. Guys, if you like the way that looks, hit the like button down below. And so we're going to come in here and we're going to say we want that to go to a distance of eight plus four for our eight millimeter gap between each instance. That preview looks very similar to what I'm seeing on the print. I'm gonna hit the green check mark. I'm gonna hide this plane. I'm gonna hide this sketch. 
I'm going to do a control Q to rebuild everything. And I'm going to take a look at my sensor. And I am coming up with a mass of 129 grams. And that is correct. And that is how you can use the very sketch command to create a pattern of a sweep in 3D and have it update dynamically to follow the Pierce constraints from the original seed instance of the pattern. And if you liked that video, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to share this video with other SolidWorks enthusiasts. And let me know down in the comments what your favorite part of the video was. And of course, if you like my style of training and you wanna learn all about lofts and sweeps, patterns and multi-body and curves and all kinds of other cool stuff in SolidWorks, be sure to sign up for that advanced part design training class. It's happening at the end of this month, live with me, Too Tall Toby, and I will look forward to seeing all of my students in that class, and I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.